The Acer Aspire 1 Cloudbook 11 is the newest low-end Windows laptop available and represents a couple of firsts. The first sub $200 laptop shipping with Windows 10 installed, and the first one with the Intel N3050 Braswell Celeron processor. How does it fare in terms of build quality and performance when compared to similar laptops like last year's HP Stream 11 and the Asus X205TA? Can it run full office apps, Minecraft, and Hearthstone? Find out here in my video review of the Acer Cloudbook 11. Let's start off with the basics. Right now, the only version available is the Acer Cloudbook 11 at $189 US. Supposedly a Cloudbook 14 with a larger display will be released in the near future. The Cloudbook 11 includes an 11.6 inch display, 32 gigs of eMMC flash storage, and 2 gigabytes of RAM. Note that users have no ability to upgrade the RAM or storage. The display is a matte coated anti-glare TN panel with a resolution of 1366 by 768. Powering the Cloudbook is the Intel N3050 Celeron, a Braswell generation dual core Celeron processor. The Cloudbook ships with Windows 10 pre-installed and has about 15 gigabytes of free storage space available. It also includes a one-year subscription to Office 365 and one terabyte of Microsoft OneDrive cloud storage. The Cloudbook is rated for eight hours of use per battery charge, which sounds about right provided you keep the screen at 50% brightness and keep the device in balanced power mode. It also has 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, which is about three times faster than the previous generation Windows with Bing laptops, which shipped with 802.11 N. The Cloudbook makes a decent first impression. It weighs 2.5 pounds and has a budget but business friendly appearance. The lid has a light texture to it and the device feels solid and sturdy without too much flex or give in the body. Looking at the outside of the Cloudbook we find two USB ports, one 3.0 and one 2.0, as well as HDMI, an SD card slot, and a combo headphone microphone jack. One immediate frustration here is that the SD card does not fully insert into the SD card slot. This is highly aggravating on a device with limited storage like the Cloudbook, as an inserted SD card is a great way to add more storage space. Opening up the device, we have a 1366 by 768 TN panel. It has a matte anti-glare coating, which results in a somewhat muted presentation. It has decent brightness but limited viewing angles as is typical for this type of display. The keyboard is a mixed bag. The keys themselves feel good and have surprising travel, but the keyboard itself is small and relatively cramped. I did get used to it after a short period of time, and I still prefer it to the X205TA's keyboard, but the HP Stream 11's keyboard is much better. Booting up the Cloudbook takes about 20 seconds, which isn't bad for a low-end Windows device. Windows 10 itself runs pretty well in the Cloudbook, though you may have some slow periods initially while Windows downloads various OS updates. The initial setup and update process is fast and painless compared to Windows with Bing devices like the Stream 11 and the X205TA, which had between 40 and 70 pending Windows updates when first booted up. Acer includes a fair amount of bloatware, though it isn't hard to remove and is relatively unintrusive as far as these things go. It also includes McAfee antivirus, which I suggest removing immediately to improve performance. Speaking of performance, I was expecting to see around the same level of performance here as on the HP Stream 11, which ran on the Bay Trail Generation N2840 dual core Celeron. That processor actually has a higher clock speed than the N3050 in the Cloudbook, and unfortunately it seems that, if anything, the Cloudbook performs a bit slower than the Stream 11. One basic benchmark we can look at is the Octane benchmark, which is a web browsing benchmark provided by Google. The Cloudbook scores around 5,900 points when set in balance power mode and around 7,000 points in performance mode. By comparison, the Stream 11 scored around 7,800 points in performance mode, so we're looking at about a 10% reduction in performance according to this benchmark. Similarly, benchmarks in Geekbench revealed a lower score for the Cloudbook 11 than for the HP Stream. How does this impact the Cloudbook in real-world use? 
There were two places I felt the performance of the Cloudbook was disappointing, even when the laptop was set to performance mode. The first is with web browsing. The Cloudbook ships with Microsoft's Edge browser and Mozilla Firefox installed, and of course it can also support Google's Chrome browser. Unfortunately, no matter which browser I tried, pages rendered slowly and browsing performance degraded badly after just a few open tabs. That said, for light web browsing, this device is fine and comparable to other budget laptops. The second performance disappointment was with Minecraft, by which I mean traditional Java-based PC Minecraft. Both the Stream 11 and X205TA could run Minecraft, provided all the graphic settings were turned down, and could actually run it pretty well when using the Optifine plugin. Unfortunately, the processor in the Cloudbook, which supposedly has around twice the graphics performance as the Stream 11 or X205TA's processors, couldn't really run Minecraft. Technically, it can open the application and launch it, but it averages somewhere between 2 and 6 frames per second, which is completely unplayable. Even using Optifine made no difference in the performance. I'm hoping this is a driver issue, as it doesn't really make sense to me, but as things stand right now, you cannot play traditional Minecraft on the Cloudbook 11. Despite these two issues, the Cloudbook performs pretty well in general use. One highlight is the trackpad, which is actually excellent. It is responsive in all situations and feels great to use, including three-finger horizontal and vertical swiping. This is by far the best trackpad that I've come across in a low-end Windows device. In addition, Minecraft fans can at least play the Windows 10 Minecraft Beta, which is almost shockingly smooth and looks great on the Cloudbook, and takes advantage of native Xbox 360 controller support. Redeeming the free Office 365 key and installing those applications was easy and painless, and the apps themselves run without any problems for basic use. Power users of complex Excel macros and linking, heavy Word templates, and high-end PowerPoint presentations will likely want a more powerful machine than this, but for basic functions, the Cloudbook is responsive and actually quite pleasant to use. Steam installs without any issues, and low-end games like Towerfall Ascension, Duck Game, FTL, and Super Meat Boy all run great on the Cloudbook. Big Picture Mode in Steam is usable, and I was also able to stream games at home from my gaming PC to my Cloudbook using Steam in-home streaming. To my surprise, Hearthstone actually runs very well on the Cloudbook. I had some stuttering on medium settings, but on low, all of those issues disappeared, and everything ran very, very well. The Cloudbook is fine for getting your Hearthstone fix. Video streaming also works without any issues on the Cloudbook, provided other tasks are kept to a minimum. I watched videos from YouTube, Netflix, HBO Go, and Amazon, and all ran without any problems except for the occasional stutter upon initially launching the video, which is fairly typical of budget processors. There's a lot to like about the Cloudbook 11. With an MSRP of only 189 you get a fully functional Windows 10 laptop and access to Office 365 for a year. The Cloudbook does a pretty good job with those applications and with Windows 10 in general. Hearthstone's fully playable on it, as is the Windows 10 Minecraft beta, and it has a pretty good battery life and, frankly, a terrific trackpad. Unfortunately, the web browsing performance is a disappointment on the Cloudbook, no matter what browser you prefer. For light browsing in a few tabs, it is slow but functional, but multi-tab warriors are going to struggle mightily with the Cloudbook. It can't run traditional Minecraft at all, and the keyboard can best be described as something you get used to. The screen is typical of low-end devices, with only Asus being able to ship decent monitors on their cheaper laptops. Both the ASUS C201 Chromebook and the ASUS X205TA laptop have much better screens than either the Cloudbook 11 or the HP Stream 11. As with most of these devices then, the Cloudbook has trade-offs. 
For those who want a Windows 10 laptop for light web browsing, light gaming including Hearthstone and Steam streaming, and for using Microsoft Office applications, this is a very good value. However, if you need your laptop to perform with more than five open web tabs, or if you have to run traditional Minecraft, you'll need to look elsewhere. I hope you found this review helpful, and if you did, liking and sharing is greatly appreciated. If you have any questions about this review or the Acer Cloudbook 11, please ask in the comments. You can also check out my full written review of this device and other budget laptops at Voltron00x.com. See the links in the description. This has been Voltron 00X reviewing the Acer Cloudbook 11. Thanks for watching and stay safe out there. Thank you.